these are great occasions, you know. Um, fantastic occasions. I, I sometimes think that, and we've been discussing it at the North-South Conference over the last few days, that the view of academics is that they just sit on their backsides and uh, do very little and occasionally churn out an article and a book. And, you know, for those of us who've uh, spent a lot of our time over the last, in my case, 35 years, I know it doesn't look like that, but uh, over the last 35 years, research and writing, the research process, the writing process, as well as all our teaching and everything else, is a very privileged position to be in, but it's hard work. You don't actually produce uh, work of this stature, work of this nature, without real hard work. And so we should always celebrate these moments. These are great moments, particularly when the work, and in both cases, uh, this is the case, uh, when the work has a real direct relevance to the societies in which we live. And when that work in itself is not only scholarship uh, that is of national significance, but also has international significance. I wanted to say just very briefly a few words about both Hakim and Vicky, um, if I may, and also uh, a, a short account of their work. I'm in uh, incredible, it's incredible admiration for both of them. Uh, at the start of your academic career these days, as anybody who works in universities know, it's a much different world to the one we occupied, or I occupied, when I first started. The pressures, the intense, uh, the intense pressure on us to publish, on young scholars to publish, in order to get tenure, the uh, often conflicting and draining pressures that we feel in terms of teaching, research, um, and also in terms of writing. Finding the time once you're actually teaching is a really difficult situation. Uh, and both uh, Vicky and Hakim have managed to do that and managed to produce works of great scholarship. Hakim, as has just been uh, stated by Chad, uh, joined Queen's in August 2009. And forbid, uh, forgive me if I read some of this, but he came from Glasgow University School of Law. he previously done his Bachelor of Laws in the University of Lagos and qualified in the Nigerian Law School in 1997. Um, worked as a barrister for five years in the Attorney General's Chambers in Lagos State Ministry for Justice. I'm not going to give the rest of his, uh, his, his biography, but one of the things I will pull out is that this book, Transitional Justice, Judicial Accountability and the Rule of Law, is not only a significant statement in terms of years of scholarship, but it has also embodied another work that uh, Hakim has, has actually published. Uh, he's published in leading research journals, and I want to pick out particularly two articles, uh, The Judiciary and Constitutionalism in Transition to Critique. I'm picking that out, and I'm not a great one for awards myself, but I think they do recognize great scholarship, and they recognize the judgment of our peers. And that won the silver medal in the Global Jurist 2007 award. He also won the highly commended Emerald Literati Network Award 2009 for another article, the main thrust of which is in this book, Democratic Transition, Judicial Accountability, and Judicialization of Politics in Africa. That was published in the International Journal of Law and Management, and it focused on the Nigerian experience. One of the, point, the great points about this book is it kind of res it responds to, if I may be personal about it for a moment, a moment that I had when I first went to South Africa after apartheid had finished. I'd been a, a paid up member of the ANC and I never thought in my lifetime I would go to South Africa. And one night at a university dinner I found myself sitting opposite three judges, three aging judges, all white. And the only thing that I could think of throughout that dinner was what did you do under the apartheid regime? Who has held you accountable for your judgments? Who has held you accountable for your professional experience? And that's what the central tenet of this great work actually tackles. Not 
in South Africa, but in the broader international experience. What is the role of the judiciary in the authoritarian past of transitional societies? That's a brave question to ask. It's a question that transitional states don't really want to answer. How many times do we hear, leave the past behind and move on? But we can't move on until the past is actually revisited. And nowhere do we know that better than here in the north of Ireland. So the importance for me of the book is that it actually has a backward-looking aspect to it about institutional acknowledgement of the judicial role in governance, not only in the past, but in what, what Hakim calls the transitional moment. And that is a, such an important statement to make. It's such an important area of examination. And it's also something that goes right to the heart of what we mean by, tra by transition. We hear so often the words post-conflict, when in actual fact we are still living in conflicted societies. We hear post-conflict as a mantra. The relief of post-conflict is that we have left the past behind. But the reality on the ground, in the lives of those who suffered, in all situations, the reality is one of transition. How long does transition take? I don't know. My intuition tells me perhaps three generations. So it is absolutely vital that when we look at the authoritarian um, context of the past, we put into that context the role of those who played major parts. We hold them to account. Even if we don't hold them to account with a hint of vengeance or with a hint of using the process of prosecution to put people behind bars. But we hold them to account in terms of the acknowledgement of their role in the past. And as our visitors here from Canada and the USA and Australia and New Zealand will testify, that past can be hundreds of years. Saying sorry is something that does take hundreds of years. And in that, in the week after Bloody Sunday inquiry, the Savile inquiry, that issue brings it right home to the core of our thinking. This is a very important book. It's an important book because it actually puts transitional justice right at the heart of judicial accountability and the rule of law.